What's happening everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam, this is Van City Audi. We are at Racing Greed to dyno test my B9S4 again. This time we're doing a before and after comparison of integrated engineering's air intake system paired with their turbo inlet. A lot of you might be wondering why I am doing two parts at once and it's simple. We are way behind on this build. We started off the year about two months later than I anticipated because of the brake kit that I put on my car and the delays that we suffered. So because they go hand in hand with one another, integrated engineering actually offers them as a package. You can buy them together and it's a very small increase in price to get the turbo inlet added to the air intake. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a before, a baseline. We still are utilizing that same stage one E85 tune from Integrated Engineering, and we have an E70 ethanol content. I've data logged the car a ton. An E70, E65 in this incredible weather that we have is the perfect spot for my car to make power and not overly stress the fuel system. So besides that, there's something else that's a little embarrassing, but it happened yesterday, and I'll explain that to you right now. So 2022 hasn't been my finest hour. I've made a bunch of mistakes so far on the channel. I own up to all of them. I am only human. We all make mistakes, but I made another one. So here's the engine bay of my B9S4. For whatever reason, on the inspection of the vehicle, and when I looked it over, brought it to rider performance, we didn't ever look at the air intake. Check this out. Oh my God. You can't see in there, it's filled with leaves and dirt. My filter is freaking dirty as hell. I cannot believe for the life of me how my car has been able to perform so well with such a dirty air intake system. That is crazy. The entire time I've owned this B9S4, all the performance testing, all the quarter mile times, all the drag racing have been with that dirty ass filter. Time to throw in a new one and see if I can go even faster. So we have a brand new day old filter. No more used, disgusting, full of debris air filter. A brand new one, one day old. Making sure that my car makes as much power as it possibly can prior to installing the aftermarket parts. The other thing is we have Integrated Engineering's intercooler system installed now. I've shown that it is lowering my intake air temp a ton. If you missed that video, I highly suggest you check it out. We installed the part at Rider Performance. I logged the car before, I logged the car after, and I shared with you just what a tremendous decrease in IETs it made for my car. I was blown away. So I'm not sure what to expect today, to be honest with you. It is a little warmer than it was the last time I was here on this same tune with the OEM intercooler and it's gonna warm up even more throughout the day. So I'm wondering if now that we have that intercooler, if I'm gonna be able to make a little bit more power because the IETs are gonna be lower. We're gonna find out. On this channel, I always pride myself on giving you guys as honest a depiction of the power this car makes. On the dyno, on the back roads of Mexico, on the drag strip, regardless of where I am, I always try to give you as accurate a number as we can. Now why I do a baseline run each time I'm here at Racing Greed is because the ambient conditions are different, the temperature is different today, the density altitude is different today, from the last time I was on the dyno, which I think was about three weeks ago now. It's a warmer day today, and I also have have different hardware on the car. I have that clean air filter and I have the upgraded intercooler from Integrated Engineering. So here's the difference between today's baseline run and the final numbers we ended with the last time I was here. 
Here they are guys, the numbers that we made last time versus today, same tune, just an intercooler and a clean filter. Last time we made 384 wheel horsepower, today we made 389 wheel horsepower. We made 481 for the foot pounds of torque last time, but we're down today to 472, a perfect example of why I do baseline runs. There you can see the torque last time spiked a little higher and today the horsepower held strong because the car ran as it was supposed to on the dyno. We didn't have those weird upsets in the all wheel drive system, the ABS system interfering with the run. We managed to figure that out today. In order to make my car run properly on the dyno, I did two things. I put the car in dyno mode and I also removed the sport differential fuse in the trunk. I will release a very short video in the following week to explain how that was done. Now we have the baseline run. Now it's time for the hardware change. The reason why we're here today to see how much power and torque Integrated Engineering's air intake system paired with their turbo inlet can make on my B9S4 using a stage one E85 tune. This is the last time we'll see my engine bay looking like this. We are now going to replace the air intake system as well as the turbo inlet. Here's everything that came in the boxes from IE. The turbo inlet and the silicone adapter were in a separate container. That's the original adapter that comes with the kit, but because I purchased it as a package, you get these two together to make sure that it can connect properly to the larger turbo inlet. Here it is taken out of the plastic and damn, does this thing ever look nice. High quality stuff from integrated engineering as I have come to expect the silicone adapter down to the turbo inlet, as well as the extra pieces of hardware you need to make this happen. OEM parts have been removed, both the turbo inlet and the air intake. There's my itty bitty turbo with no turbo inlet and no air intake. I'll show you side by side now so you can see what we're installing. Look at that difference, guys. <laughs> it's huge. The IE turbo inlet versus the OEM turbo inlet. What a difference in size, wow. Pretty impressive size difference. We'll see how much of a difference it makes on the dyno though. As for the air intake, I am too lazy to open this up. I'm sorry guys, but you can imagine that filter is pretty much the entire size of that housing. And here is that beautiful one day old filter that I talked about replacing earlier in the video. Let's get this in the car and see what kind of power we can make with both. I hope nobody thinks I'm smart out there. I didn't flip the intake over when I unbagged it. I didn't even realize that it was open on the bottom like this. You can see just how large the filter is. That is a very cool design from IE. And right beside that, the size of the OEM filter. That is pretty damn neat. Inlet is in, now we're working on the air intake and we noticed this in the bottom of the box. So my apologies guys, there was another piece of hardware in that IE box that comes with the air intake and turbo inlet kit. Here it is all completed. The install is now done. Here's the turbo inlet looking good. And that air intake, the quality on this thing, the fit and finish is fabulous as I have come to expect from integrated engineering hardware. Now that they're installed, we got to find out how much power these things make. So now we're ready to rock and roll. Dyno test number two, the after numbers. We have the inlet installed. We have the air intake installed. Same exact tune, same fuel, same day before and after results, let's see how much power we're able to make with this IE setup. Before I get to these numbers, I wanted to remind you guys this is an all-wheel drive Mustang dyno here that we show uncorrected numbers on. This is not a dyno jet number. These are not dyno jet calibrated numbers. So my numbers probably showcase quite a bit lower than the majority of other B9 owners out there that all show dyno jet numbers. My reason for doing that is to prove to you guys that dynos vary from shop to shop. What I'm trying to show here is the before and after effects of an 
install. Again, I'm using a Stage 1 E85 tune. There are higher power tunes in the Stage 2 software that uses more bolt-on parts like a downpipe where you might gain more power, I'm not too sure. But right now, this test was on an upgraded intercooler, upgraded turbo inlet, upgraded air intake system, and an upgraded charge pipe from CTS Turbo, which I forgot to mention earlier, but I don't think that makes any power. And here are the final results of the day with that air intake and inlet installed. My apologies on this readout. We accidentally uh, shortened the stop speed on the dyno, but it peaks over here anyways. So the fact that it falls here, it's not the end of the world. What we saw before and after. Before we hit 389 wheel and after we hit 398.78, so close to 400 wheel horsepower for a gain of just shy of 10 wheel horsepower. We saw an increase from 472 to 475 in foot pounds of torque for a gain of three. There are the dyno graphs. It didn't quite hit as hard on the bottom end, but as we started gaining in the RPMs, we saw it peak higher in the mid range, which I'm totally fine with, by the way. <laughs> How often are you down here when I'm launching my car at the track? This power is what matters. And that's where we see the gain throughout the top half. As for the horsepower, a little bit of a gain, or a little bit lower down low, but then it goes higher all the way through the rest of the pull, all the way up to that 6,500 RPM red line. We're all done here at Racing Greed for the day. Thank you very much to Tommy, the dyno operator, for the dyno session, as well as the install of my hardware. 10 wheel horsepower, or just shy of 10 wheel horsepower, and three foot-pounds of torque from the inlet and the air intake from Integrated Engineering. I was hoping for more, I really was. But that's at a stage one E85 level, not at a full bolt-on stage two E85 level or even further with a hybrid where I imagine these upgrades will make more of an impact. Still, you got some spoolie boy noises and I'm just shy of 400 wheel horsepower on this all-wheel drive Mustang dyno here at Racing Greed. I know the car is gonna be faster now and ultimately that's all I care about. So stay tuned to the channel, guys. Coming soon, I will be back out at Mission Raceway, quite possibly on the back roads of Mexico first, to see how much quicker and how much faster I'm able to go in the quarter mile in my B9 S4. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take care.